Okay, so Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, starring Whoopi Goldberg, the sequel to Sister Act, which I reviewed last time. I forget what I gave it, but I liked the first one quite a bit. This one isn't as good, but it's still pretty fun. Most of the complaints are about it being a little bit too by the numbers, a little bit too cookie cutter, but I think there's enough in here to be entertaining with like the, the cast. The writing isn't anything super spectacular, but there are some funny jokes. Wilkie Goldberg elevates the material. Um, and yeah, we'll get into it a little more deeply. I have some notes, but let's look at the Rotten Tomatoes score. So it gets 18%, which is rough for the critic score, and about 61% for the audience score. So this is one of those cases where the audience is a little more lenient. And honestly, I, I'm more on the audience side on this one. Let's read the critics' consensus, though. Sister Act is off-key in this reprise, fatally shifting the spotlight from Whoopi Goldberg to a less compelling ensemble of pupils and training, trading its predecessor's sharp comedy for unconvincing sentiment. I don't know. I think that I get what they're saying, but the, the stuff they do with the kids works for the most part. There's some things that are maybe a little bit contrived and a little bit like, oh, okay. You're doing this because of the formula or whatever, but still. Uh, if you can get past the fact that it's a little formulaic, it's still entertaining, I'd say. Um, let's look at some of these cr reviews. Even by sequel standards, a minimal amount of creativity has gone into Sister Act 2. And not even the talents of its cast, including several likable young people, can compensate for this thrown-together feeling. I get it, but at the same time, it's uh, it's an it was enough for me to be satisfied with the sequel at least, considering how terribly resistible to me at least last year's Sister Act was. The sequel seems like a movie miracle. This is someone who liked the sequel more. Interesting. I think I like the first one more still though. Um, music is the one thing the sequel gets right. Actually, and we'll get into it. I think the music, although sometimes it's good in this, it's not as good as the first one. I'll get into that. When we get into the note. Last review, I'll read this is a positive one. A singer's movie for the ages. One with virtually no contemporary rivals. It feels like a film that could have been made only by people who understand on an intuitive level why we sing in the first place. So they like, they like the, the sort of feeling it gives you because it's that the sort of upbeat, like do what you want to do, follow your dreams, sing what does singing do for you? Obviously, I love singing. So I kind of get that review. Uh, but yeah, that's the Rotten Tomatoes. 18% critics, which is rough. 61% audience score, which I think is a little more fair. Let's look at the IMDb. 5.6 out of 10. You know, fair enough, I guess. Whoopi Goldberg. Kathy Najimy, one of the nuns. And she was also in Hocus Pocus, which we, I reviewed a little while ago. Maggie Smith, whose mother appears in tons of stuff like Harry Potter, uh, and lots of other stuff. I'm just going through all the names here. And Lauren Hill, oh my goodness, she was Rita, of course. Lauren Hill from the Fugees and her solo career, of course. That makes sense. That's cool. She was actually not a bad, uh, bad at acting in this. Just some of the the direction it was a little contrived at times, maybe, and a little predictable. But she did a good job as, in the in the role, I'd say. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, I didn't even know she was in this. What? When is she's? Oh, she plays Margaret. Okay. Oh right, she's one of the she's one of the nuns. I didn't even notice that. Jennifer Love Hewitt, cool. Uh, all right, let's see if this movie made money in the box office. Lauren, when did you tell me? <laughs> I told you. When did you tell me that? Just now? I guess that's true. Um, but yeah, she's good. She was good in it. Uh, you might have told me a while ago, and I forgot. But $38 million budget. So, you know, that was a similar what the budget of bringing down the house was, actually. Oh, and it didn't do great, but it still made money. $57 million gross. So it made 
over its budget still. So many times I've told you Baby Lauren Hill in, in SA2. Yeah, probably. I forget, you know, I smoke a lot of weed. I forget, I forget shit. But I believe you. Um, and yeah, it was, but it was a pleasant surprise anyway, even though you already told me. <laughs> uh, the gross worldwide, 57 million over a $38 million budget. So not great, but they made money. I think there's talk of a, they might be making a Sister Act 3 for Disney Plus, so maybe I'll review that when it comes out. Oh wait, there's actually an IMDb page for it. Kicking the Habit, Sister Act 3, 2024. It's to come out in 2024, it, it says here. Crazy. Okay. Well, let's look at the notes here. Let's get into it. <laughs> um, let's see here. Not bringing down the house anymore. Sister Act 2 notes. So, why are the sisters so sneaky when bringing Whoopi Goldberg back into the church? So, the movie starts off, we see Whoopi Goldberg in Vegas doing her show. But then the nuns come and visit her and be like, we need you to come back to the convent. We need your help. We can't explain right now, but Mother Superior will explain. So they bring her to the church but they act like they're like sneaking her in and they're trying to like make it a surprise but apparently mother superior already asked her to come here so i don't understand why they're trying to hide her I, it doesn't make sense to me but it's fine i guess sort of a nitpick but i'm just like why, why are you hiding her? They, she knows she's coming um german sausage is good though so i think this movie sort of does german Germans dirty, especially specifically the food. So they have their cook in this school, and he's a German cook. And I guess he only cooks sausage. And I get like having to eat the same thing over and over again, kind of gross. But they act like it's disgusting. It's like it's fucking sausage. I would eat that shit. It looked good to me. I would have eaten it. <laughs> so yeah, quit dissing German sausage. <laughs> uh, yeah, like most comedies, the jokes are hit and miss. But it's not like um, bringing down the house where I was actually cringing for the for the missed joke. So I I, I did like this a little more <laughs> than bringing down the house. Um, music ass is funny. So this is a joke I laughed at in uh, the music room when they go in at first. The C L has been faded out of the sign, so it says music ass instead of music class. Silly but noteworthy. I thought it was kind of funny. Um, they say all you have to do is show up to pass, but then they don't let her finish the in attendance. So yeah, Whoopi Goldberg, is, it's the classic trope of like, you know, these underprivileged kids, they don't want to learn, but Whoopi Goldberg's going to teach them how to learn in a way that, that makes them feel good and makes sense for them. Um, but before that happens, they have to have the scene where it's like, we don't want to be taught by the teacher, you know? This is just a, a class to, that we can fly by. We, all we got to do is show up and we pass. And they say that. All we have to do is show up and we pass. But then they don't let her finish the attendance. Yeah, how do I reach these kids? Exactly, exactly. But yeah, they don't let her do attendance, so that doesn't make sense to me. It's like they, she only did like half the class, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna go back to our rap song that we're doing at the beginning of the scene," and it's like, "Okay, I get it," but at the same time, she you gotta let her do attendance at least. Come on. Um. Anyway, moving on. Ba boop boop boo. What pep rally? So there's a part where the principal of the school that Whoopi Goldberg is now teaching that with all these nuns. Um, the principal says something about Whoopi Goldberg having done some sort of a pep rally or the equivalent of a pep rally. And I'm not sure what they're referring to. It was it like one of the classes that they were like singing and stuff or was it something off screen? I was just kind of confused by that. It's like, what pep rally is he talking about? I don't understand. Um, but a little bit of a nitpick because it's not that important to the plot. The stakes are lower than the original movie. Yes, a little bit. Which maybe debatably makes it a little less exciting than the original. Because the whole movie in the first one, you're like, oh my god. You know, she could get killed because her ex-boyfriend is from the mafia and she's, you know, he's trying to kill her. Um, but this one is just like, 
we, we gotta save the school. <laughs> that's that's it. Uh, there's no life or death stakes. So yeah, the stakes are lower in this one. Um, boo. I don't get why the kids laugh at the one nun. So, I guess the point that the movie's trying to make is just like kids can be disrespectful sometimes, so they're laughing at one of the nuns for just for waving, but I don't know. It seems like crazy to me that they would even do that at all. It's like, she just, she was just saying hi. Like, do you need to be like, oh, look at that stupid bitch. It's like, no, no, she's just being friendly. I guess the point is kids are cruel, but... Usually the cruelty makes a little bit more sense than just like, oh, she's saying hi. Look how stupid she is for saying hello. I don't know. Didn't, didn't, that didn't make sense to me. Um, but um, songs a little more lifeless than in the original. So some of the songs work for me, but I don't know. Some of them they just are missing like an oomph or something uh, than, than the original soundtrack. Uh, the, the original movie soundtrack seemed a little more put together a little more oomphy, a little more, a little more fun or something. This one just seems a little more contrived, like they were phoning it in at times. Some of the songs are good, but some of them I'm just like, eh, that could have been a little bit better. It could have had a little bit more wow factor in that song. But so again, some of them were good. But yeah, overall, the songs were a little bit more lifeless in this one for me than the original film. Um... I don't understand why the old music room was shut down. Yeah, they go, because at first they're just in a regular classroom doing this music class, and then Whoopi Goldberg takes them over to the abandoned music room, because there's apparently an abandoned music room, because um, it has better acoustics, which, you know, makes sense. And I don't understand why this room was closed to begin with. Like, the only problem with it that I see is that it's dusty. And then guess what they do? They clean it up and they paint it and it's fine. And then it becomes a nice room. But it's like, you could have just dusted it and swept it up a bit and it would have been fine. Um, but no, you gotta close the classroom. Like, no, you keep that one open because it has the good acoustics. So that part didn't make sense to me either. Um, the mom is being unreasonable about not letting her sing even though it's for school. So yeah, this is another part of the movie that's, classic sort of uh cookie cutter it's just a, it's a trope in a lot of movies that's what i'm trying to say where the the mom doesn't want to let the kid do the creative thing she doesn't want to let her sing because she thinks she'll fail but it's just a little extreme because it's like really like you're you're getting mad at her for singing at all it's like wow dare you sing it's like She's doing it for school. It's a school project. Like, you can't even understand that. She's like, there's no money in it, so get the fuck out. It's like, calm down. And obviously, you know, they do the thing at the end. It was like, okay, I understand now. I'll let you follow your dreams. The, the, the classic cliche. But still, still the, the way we get there is a little bit much for me. I, I was just like, really? She's, she's that angry about her wanting to sing? Like... Like, why not let her try? She's like, we could win this contest. She's like, I don't give a fuck if you could win this contest. You put your put your brain back in the books, not in the music books. Um, so, yeah, I thought that she... I get that that's the point, but I think it's a little crazy that she was that mad about it. Bring it on. You talking about the movies? Like, the cheerleading movies? What you talking about, Stevie? Um... Lip syncing is a little bit better in this one. So this is one thing that I think they did better in this. Because there was one scene in particular in the first one, near the beginning of the movie, where it was so blatantly out of sync with the with the, the music. Like Whoopi Goldberg was singing, but her mouth wasn't moving at one point. I was just like, what? I actually went back a couple times to be like, what am I watching? Um, but in this one, uh, they it looks pretty good, all the, all the lip syncing. A lot better anyway. Uh, so that's one thing they did better. Uh, she's on the cover. Yeah, I think some of that mean parent stuff in the cheerleader... Oh, yeah, I, b I believe that. It's been a while since I've seen Bring It. I've seen a few of them. There's, like, nine of, of those fucking movies. I think I've seen, like, the first two or three of them, though. Um, and, yeah, I believe it. Like I said, it's a cliche. That trope of of the, the mom or the dad being like, Don't you be doing your dream 
you going to work in the factory or whatever, you know, whatever alternative that they want that the kid doesn't want. Such a classic trope. Um, but yeah, it was, it's a little annoying, but it's like, you kind of get it, but I just think she's being too unreasonable, even for this trope, you know? Um, she's on the cover of a Rolling Stone and nobody says anything about it. So Whoopi Goldberg, she's a lounge singer in Vegas. So she, and that whole thing in the first movie, I guess, made the news. So she was on, she's on the cover of a Rolling Stone magazine. And we don't get told about this at all. Like you would have think she would have, maybe it, it was like in between movies this happened or something and they're finding this issue later. But I think it's kind of weird uh, because the way we find out about it is like the the principal and the administrator see it and like, oh, this woman's not a nun. She's on, she's on the cover of a Rolling Stone. But it's like, wouldn't we have known she was on the cover of Rolling Stone? I would have liked to see what Whoopi Goldberg was like, oh my God, I'm on the cover of Rolling Stone. We should try to hide this from the administrator. And then he still finds it or something. It would have made a little more sense instead of them just being like, what the fuck? She's on the cover of Rolling Stone. It just seemed a little weird to me. It's not un unforgivable, but it, I just think it was a little peculiar um, that we're not finding out that she's on a cover of Rolling Stone until the plot <laughs> the plot needs to use it. Um, but yeah, Final Destination, bring it on again too, or whatever. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, they should they should start doing that more, and I th I heard they might, and by that I mean take movie franchises that you don't think would belong together and put them together. Like, I think they're going to be putting Jurassic Park and Fantastic... Or not, not Fantastic Four. F f the Fast and the Furious series together. So that, I don't like the Fast and the Furious series. I kind of like Jurassic Park. But it would be kind of funny to see, like, cars going around and dinosaurs. It's ridiculous, but at least it's something different. Um, anyway, what else we got for these notes here? Why did they let Thomas drive? So Thomas is one of the monks or whatever, and they're going to the music competition, the administrator, the principal, and Thomas, and some of the other priests or monks or whatever. So they're in this van, and Thomas is driving, and he's driving poorly, and everyone's like, you don't have your license. You should let someone with your the driver's license drive. It's like, how is this conversation happening now after he's in the car? They should have had this conversation before. Someone who can actually drive should be driving. It's not safe. It's just ridiculous. It's like, like clearly he shouldn't be driving. But it's for the comedy, I guess. So they, they, had, to, they had to have that scene with him driving all wacky. But it's like, no, you, you shouldn't have let him drive from the beginning. That was your, your mistake, you stupid monks and principal and administrator. But anyway... Yeah, they shouldn't have let Thomas drive. That's my note there. Um, it's good they took off their robes because it would have been harder to do the flips and shit. So at the end of the movie, they have, of course, they have the big final musical number where they're performing in this um, competition. And I don't think this is really a spoiler, but spoiler it's sort of. They win the competition. Obviously, it's gonna. I was, it's very predictable, but you know, you you want them to save the school. You want all that shit to happen. But it is sort of cliche and perhaps a little contrived, but I still kind of enjoyed that. But my problem with it, or not a problem with it, but my note about it is um, right before they make the decision, because they're all wearing these choir robes, but then right before they do the performance, they're like, let's take off the robes and let's do our routine just in our regular street clothes. And... Good thing they did it, because they're, like, doing flips and stuff, and it's, like, it would have been hard to do that in the robes. So it's a good thing that they made that last-minute decision to uh, take off the robes so they could be more flexible and with the flips and the dancing and the what-have-you. But, yeah, that's the end of my notes. Uh, so to sum up this movie, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit, I liked this. Um, it had a few problems, but it was fun. Uh, feel good comedy, Kathy and Jimmy, Whoopi Goldberg, the nuns, the ensemble of nuns, even though they're not as 
a central focus as in the first one. They're still in it and they're still fun. And the kids, I think, are a good addition. Yes, it's contrived, predictable. Uh, but overall, it's still fun. And uh, I, to me anyway, and obviously Stevie and a lot of the fans, it's a welcome installment. It's, uh, it's not as good as the first one, but it's still fun. And I, I enjoyed the movie. Um, I'm going to give this... Honestly, let's go. Let's go 6.8. Seems a little weird, maybe, but that seems about right to me. Not perfect, but not bad for a sequel. And yeah, I laughed. It's a little hit and miss, but it's it's a little contrived, a little um by the numbers. But like I said, it's still pretty fun. So yeah, Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. I'm giving it 6.8 out of 10 ducks.